Hi everybody, my name is Ruby Barra and I am a student nurse here at the BCIT Public Health Unit. So I just wanted to welcome all the new mothers here today um, and inviting you to join in our discussion on a few breastfeeding issues, both maternal and infant. So the maternal breastfeeding issue that we will be talking about today is a blocked milk duct and the infant breastfeeding issue that we will be discussing is a tongue-tied infant. So throughout this presentation, if any of you new mothers have any questions, just jot it down on a piece of paper and we'll be sure to answer it at the very end. So I'm going to be explaining these breastfeeding issues using the clinical decision-making framework. So this involves knowledge, so what do we know about this issue, the pathophysiology behind it, the psychosocial factors of the mom, and the mother's expectations as well. We'll be looking at different cues, so signs and symptoms of breastfeeding issues for both the mom and baby. So for the mom, the condition of her breast and if that's affecting breastfeeding, or the baby, so the gestational age, different feeding cues, or again, signs looking for the tongue tie. We'll also be looking at attitudes and beliefs about breastfeeding. Next is judgment, so how is the relationship between the mom and the baby? Um, am I able to help you on my own, or should we get a consultation from another healthcare professional, or maybe a referral to somebody else as well? And then next will be decisions, so that will be different treatment options and support for blocked milk ducts and tongue tie. And then finally, evaluation. So whatever actions we did, we did, did that help you in your breastfeeding? Are you satisfied with it? So all of these will be incorporated, incorporated throughout the presentation. So what exactly is tongue tie? Let's start by looking at the pathophysiology behind this. The membrane under your tongue is called a frenulum, and in some cases, the frenulum is really short and it attaches near the tip of your tongue. So if you feel in your own mouth, you can kind of feel a little string that's connecting your tongue to the bottom of your mouth. This is what is, we refer to as a frenulum. In some infants, it connects too close to the tip of your tongue, and this can be very problematic. I have an image here to show you, just so you can picture it a little bit better. So as you can see, the green arrow is pointing to the frenulum. This also causes the tongue to have, give it that little heart shape, which is another indicator of tongue tie. So why is this a problem? Why do we even care about it? Because it can lead to breastfeeding challenges for both the baby and the mom. For example, it can cause a poor latch, it can cause nipple pain for the mom, blocked milk ducts, or even engorgement as well. So what are some signs and symptoms? So as I mentioned, there's an ineffective latch, so the baby may repeatedly break the latch from the breast, um, maybe make clicking noises when breastfeeding, the baby might not be gaining any weight, you as the mom might be experiencing nipple pain throughout breastfeeding, and you notice that your milk supply is dwindling as well. In, re in regards to the mom, sometimes the shape of your breast, the size of your nipple, and the elasticity of your breast tissue can also affect your baby's ability to breastfeed with a tongue tie. Adding to all these signs and symptoms and confusion, there's actually no standard way in which physicians can diagnose the condition. Some doctors identify it solely on just the anatomical features, they'll take a look at it, um, such as how much, how much space there is between the floor of your mouth and your tongue. Others may look at the actual function. So with tongue tie, the baby is not able to lift its tongue up. It can't move the tongue side to side. And it's not able to move the tongue out and forward. So because of those movements, as I mentioned, the baby will not be able to latch properly and breastfeed. So some physicians may look at this as a sign for tongue tie. So these are all different cues that we look for. So if your baby is not latching well due to the tongue tie, then you may be making more milk than the amount that's being expressed. When this happens, the tissue around the breast duct can get swollen and inflamed, causing pressure on the duct. This is what causes a blockage. I have an image here to show you of the mammary glands within the breast. So as you can see, there's various milk ducts within the breast. And then that one red area is a blocked milk duct, and that area can get red and swollen. So what causes this? So as I mentioned, the poor latch and the stasis of, blood, of um, milk, and maybe poor feeding techniques. So is it a poor latch or maybe incorrect positioning? Um, sometimes there may be too long of a gap between the nursing sessions. 
maybe overuse of a pacifier with the baby. And also wearing a bra that is too tight or even just tight clothing in general can sometimes cause, cause your milk duct to get um, blocked. So what does this look like on you as a mom? You may have a tender red or painful lump on the breast due to inflammation. This is what it looks like. So if you notice this on your breast or if you've seen this on you, it can be very scary to look at. This lump can be hard and can hurt quite a bit to the touch, and it can also feel very warm as well. Sometimes there's an obstruction on the nipple pore duct, which can cause a white dot at the end, and this is what we call a milk blister. So now let's, now let's talk about the management of both of these issues. So for tongue tie, if the baby is not able to breastfeed properly, then the baby will have what is called a phrenotomy, which is a clipping of the frenulum. So I have an image here. It is difficult a little bit to see, but I'll explain it the best I can. You can see that the fingers are holding the baby's mouth open. Oh, that's better. You can see that the um, somebody is holding the baby's mouth open and you can see the frenulum there and it's just being clipped just a little bit. So with the frenulum being clipped, that will allow the baby more movement with the tongue, which can help with a better latch. It was found that after phrenotomy, phrenotomy, the number of sucks increased and the pause length between sucking also decreased during breastfeeding. So research has found that the phrenotomy does help increase breastfeeding efficiency as well. With blocked milk ducts, uh, management is focused on opening up the milk duct and draining the area behind the blockage. So the single most important step in management of a blocked milk duct is frequent and effective milk removal. So we want to optimize feeding techniques. So make sure you empty your breasts as much as you can. So this is with frequent feedings. You also want to mind the positioning in the latch of the baby. Um, so with that, if I'm not able to help you with that, then I can refer you to a lactation consultant to ensure proper technique. A lactation consultant will be, will be able to provide you with various positions and tips and tricks that can help you increase your breastfeeding efficiency, which in turn will help um, get effective milk removal from the breast as well. So nursing the affected area can be very painful, but it is so important to empty the breast. Baby Center, which is a website for moms, recommends to start with the sore breast as your baby will suck the strongest at the start of the feed. This can help dislodge the plug. Other management strategies are massage. So you want to massage the sore area frequently and firmly. This will help make sure that your ducts are all drained. A tip, start from the outside of the breast and work your way towards the nipple. Another strategy is to apply a warm compress before nursing to help open up the ducts and this will help relieve any pain or swelling. Finally, you can change positions as well. Try different breastfeeding positions um, this can help make sure that everything is being drained very well. And again, a lactation consultant or your nurse can help you with this. Some clinicians suggest placing the baby's chin near the affected area as this position maximizes drainage. But again, every, everybody is different, so try what works best for you. Usually, a blocked milk duct will resolve in 48 hours. If it doesn't, sometimes additional evaluation and treatment is needed, so make sure you contact your healthcare provider. It is really important to manage this because if a blocked duct isn't managed, it can lead to mastitis, which is an infection of the breast tissue. So mastitis can lead to further complications and make breastfeeding even more difficult. So it is very important to avoid. So after this discussion, there's three main priorities that I wanted to talk about. So out of these three, the first three main priority is effective milk removal. So as I mentioned, milk removal will help unclog that duct and ensure that, your milk duct, that you're able to breastfeed properly. Second is correcting the baby's latch. So this could be whether through um, lactation consultant or even the phrenotomy to ensure that your baby is able to latch correctly. And then finally, providing support for you new mother. So whether that be with me um, or referring you to support groups in the community or even just seeing who is your support system. Do you have family and friends available to help you get through this tough time? So now I have questions from you guys. Thank you so much for writing them down on a piece of paper. I have them all here, so I will quickly go through them. All right, let's start with the first one. 
Will clogged milk ducts affect my baby? Sometimes your milk flow on the affected side may be slower than usual and your baby can become fussy when nursing on that breast. But it won't hurt you, won't hurt your baby to nurse while you have a clogged duct. Um, and the antibacterial properties of breast milk will keep your baby safe as well. So the next question. Can I still nurse? Of course you can and you should. As I mentioned, the single most best way to help with a clogged milk duct is to make sure you're emptying the breast. Home remedies. So home remedies, we really want to promote a holistic approach to help. So not just medical, but various ways to help you feel comfortable with breastfeeding. So if your breast still hurts after, trying, after breastfeeding, try heat, try massages, and frequent nursing as well. Um, always talk to your healthcare about different things that you've heard. And a lot of them may help, but it's very important to talk to your healthcare provider to make sure it doesn't, inter it doesn't harm your baby at all. And my last question. When should I go see my doctor? Well, you want to talk to your doctor or nurse if you're having problems with breastfeeding and be sure to let him or her know if um, your blocked milk duct has not gotten better after three days, if you have a fever and a hard or red swollen area on the breast, um, blood leaking from the nipples, pain that lasts the whole breastfeeding session, or if you notice your baby after the phrenotomy is still not able to move their tongue in those positions that we discussed. So just a quick summary, we talked about tongue-tied infants and mothers with blocked milk ducts. We discussed various management strategies for each. We identified three priority concerns and we answered all of your questions that you have. Thank you so much for participating in this discussion today and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Good luck with all of your breastfeeding with your new babies. Bye-bye.